Welcome to Ideas, a time of conversation about all things board games. Community is built on conversations and games are built on ideas. Hey, my name is Brent here on Cloudy with the Chance Meatballs. Today on the channel, a new month and fresh new ideas. And today we are talking to two gentlemen who have been inspired by dice. And today we are talking, it's going to be a little bit different because, of course, if you follow the channel, you know I am big into board gaming, not as big into the RPGs. But today we're going to talk about die inspired. We have Rusco and Valentine, Valentine, sorry. Um, and they, they are the designers and creators of Die Inspired. So, guys, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank thanks you for having us. Man. Yeah, awesome. This is, this, exciting. This, this is really cool. So, Die Inspired, for those who haven't heard or don't know what Die Inspired is, what is Die Inspired? It's a fantasy reality show. <laughs> okay. Played the mechanics. Uh, 5e mechanics from ttrpgs like tabletop role-playing games okay so it's it's basically survivor played with dice <laughs> okay very cool very very cool so let's um before we get into where the idea came from and the background and the story and all that stuff um let's talk about your history in board gaming of course I have games behind me, and like I said, I don't really do that many RPGs, but did you guys grow up playing tabletop board games? Yeah, my first board game, the, the first one that mattered for me was Risk. Hmm. Uh, when my dad was a kid, he had a Risk board, and nobody played with him, so he would just play himself. Okay. So he, he, so he had somebody to play with for Christmas one year, and he beat me every single time I've ever played it. <laughs> to this day yeah we had a couple times where neither one of us won <laughs> uh, but we don't talk about that those times. <laughs> but uh I i've never actually beat my dad okay yeah he's, he's pretty dang good at risk i uh my first board game experience was monopoly it was after school daycare uh, it was the ymca after school daycare they had mm -hmm. a and I was super fan. Uh, it was just, I, I just loved it. Like I was fascinated by it. I was one of the kids that actually learned the rules, right? Mm. Cause all the kids in fourth grade were just rolling the dice, moving around and paying for the property and then continue moving on the spaces. Right. Uh, but I learned that like, no, no, no. Like you can buy houses once you have all the spaces. You right. Know? And the older I got, the more people were like, Oh dude, monopoly takes, it takes so long. It's forever. I'm like, no, it, it really doesn't like me and my boys can, Wrap out a game in probably 45 minutes yeah an hour i, I think like, the and the official rules are it ends at 90 minutes yeah like yeah. like that's in the rules no like monopoly gets hated on because nobody plays it correctly that's um, right i'm not i'm personally not a big monopoly fan myself i used to have like star wars monopoly back in the day and oh yeah and whatnot all the boards um, <laughs> what i've got all the boards I've got you got all the boards nice star wars monopoly all the way to uh They've got a Parks edition, Monopoly. I've got hmm. rare Harley Davidson Monopoly. I've got like a ton. I should have had, I should have set them all up behind me. <laughs> but, so you do you still Rusko still play any board games or are you kind of just into the um RPGs and the TTRPGs? My, my board game is risk. Every time okay. dad comes down to, to visit, we set up the board mm -hmm. and Val came over not that long ago and played a game with us and you cheated. I didn't. <laughs> Everybody knows in risk. You stay in Australia, you build up your army, and then you move out and conquer the world. That's, <laughs> that's, it doesn't have a back door. That's everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. I remember playing risk uh, in high school. I'd have like a risk, a risk day, and we'd do like 10 hours, and we'd have like three tables or two, two or three games going simultaneously in my house. That's and then the winners of all those would move on. And oh, I have fond, fond memories of playing risk. And so, so, uh, what's your favorite game? What's your favorite board game? Just out of curiosity, my my favorite board game, um, is it's called Everdell. Okay. Um, it's it's way up there. It's a it's a giant box. It's it weighs twenty pounds. Um, the the base game does not weigh twenty pounds. I have like all the expansions. I have all the content. 
Um, and they just made a, a, a one for kids. It's right there, Milo Everdell. Uh, it's a worker placement game where you're building critters and it's kind of like a kind of like a red wall slash yeah kind of like a red wall type like okay. theme mm -hmm. it, right. it, so it's it, been around for a long time huh no it hasn't it's been around okay. five years and it has five expansions and they've like absolutely like pounded through content and it's crazy like this game is so phenomenally made it's only been around for like five years yeah, it's only been around five years. It must, I've got to play this game. Man. Everdell, it's un, it's it's so cool. But um, you know what? Let's dive into a Die Inspired. So where did or sorry, not where? When when did Die Inspired come to be? Like when did the when did the idea start? June of twenty twenty one. Okay. So we've been going over a year and a half now with this idea. It started out real small mm -hmm. and. Originally, we just thought we'd take some video on some phone, put a game together. We'd seen some other people on the internet do, you know, create their own games and film them and put them out there for the world to see. Mm -hmm. And then it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger to where we are now. Yeah, it was it was one of those things where it's like, all right, we'll get a couple people and then we'll play the game. There's there's some YouTube channels out there that kind of do that. Okay, and we're like, well, let's let's just do it different. Let's just blow this out. Right. Let's, let's get contestants, you know, contestants and let's give like $5,000 to the winner. And, and let's, let's, uh, you know, have death on our game, like where you could actually lose, you know, <coughs> cause you can, you can die in, in, in RPG games or TTRPG games. Right. But it's very, it's, it's uncommon that you do. And if you do, there's, there's always kind of a way out, you know, it's because you've got a group of friends and you want to play with them. You know, yeah. it's a game that doesn't start and end in one session. It, it, it's a story that goes on and on. Mm -hmm. What if we had so many people that people can get, you know, get kicked off the show and, and, and certain people survive. So we started playing with that idea and then we're like, well, we're going to have to build a world and we have to have a story that goes on for this long. And, and then, we're like, well, okay, we got a world. This is the name of our world. And and then when we start asking ourselves, you know, okay, but how did it get here? All right. So, <laughs> all right. And, and where did that come from? And where did that come from? And where did that come from? So a lot of the time was just building a backstory to every single thing we created. Mm -hmm. and so that when the players show up and, and, and we send it all by email and we had the contestants sign up and we sent out all this information by email where they're reading our story. So a lot of people came in and they knew like the base of, okay, we know the name of the world. We know where it came from. We know that, you know, the gods of the world and, and the story, what we're doing, you know, mm -hmm. what we don't know is each other. <laughs> right. And, and that was the biggest part about it. It's like we had strangers playing a character against, not against each other, but playing with each other that they're like, I don't know this guy in real life. I don't know him on the game. I don't know what he's going to do. So it was very, very interesting. It was almost like a social experiment. It very much was. You know, going like, how, you know, how are, how are people going to react to this? Because, um, you know, everyone has different personalities. And yeah. It was pretty interesting. They all Did worked together until they couldn't. <laughs> and then they worked together <laughs> together pretty fast. So, so it is season one is complete. So um, at time of, um, you know, recording here, we're only a few episodes in, but overall season one is complete. I'm assuming yeah, it is. it's filmed. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's filmed. Being released, it's being released probably one episode at a time per week. There's one episode per week um, coming up. Give or take. Give or take. We're gonna we're gonna change it up a little bit and hopefully start to get like two episodes a week. But it, all all of it is is filmed. It's a, it's in the can. It's just not we're releasing it yep. slowly as it gets edited because we have no idea what we're doing. No. Again, what Rusko said, we started off going like this is just gonna be. For fun, we didn't think we'd even get contestants to play strangers to play this. I'm walking through malls, you know, with these little cards. It was like, "Hey, come be on our show. You can win some money." And people are like, "Yeah, okay." But then we got 70 people to sign up for it, and like, "Oh, wow, this." We were the old creepy guys at Hot Topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Hey, you guys like corn?" I mean, <laughs> you're like, "Who?" And I'm like, "No, corn, dude. They're awesome." So where's where's the five thousand dollar cash coming from? Our pockets. Yeah. 
We basically <laughs> footed the bill for everything. Hmm. We took five. We took five grand, um, and just said we're going to give it away, and uh, just to make it real interesting. Uh, <laughs> we wanted that feel of the game show. And what was interesting is, and correct me if I'm wrong, when people first got there, there was the 5,000 in their mind, you know, but then it, it got to the point where it was, uh, uh, they kind of forgot about it and they kind yeah. of were playing to survive. And, hmm. you know, in between, you know, when people showed up to every session, we had an interview, you know, like a reality TV, inter- yep. like the private booth, you know, yep. where they would go and be able to speak their mind. So we did that at the first of every session. And then when someone, you know, was killed, kicked off the show, we got another interview, like an exit interview yeah. and continued doing that. So it's actually fun for us because we didn't even film that. We had our wife were helping film. I mean, we had some friends there. It just got pretty big. I'm seeing content. I'm seeing content right for the now first time that I never saw like some of these interviews. Hmm. Was an interview. So it's like, I didn't even know that happened. Yeah. Me. And so we have that, that little fuzzy feeling going like, Ooh, that's, that's uh, yeah, <laughs> they're pretty. Well, they're, that. they're pretty mad. You know? I can so, I can imagine what they're kind of just like, kind of those awkward situations where like people are like they're seriously getting into these roles yeah. and they're seriously and, we, and you almost have to have like a conflict resolution plan oh, yeah. here. Yeah, we 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 introduced and and because we made it a reality type show, we introduced some things. We're like, this will get a reaction. Oh yeah, so we actually put things in the game to get decisions people. made. Yeah, right. Uh, there was a there was an old game a long time ago called uh, it's called Lifeboat, I do believe, and it was it was like a training exercise for in the eighties. It was weird, but you go around in a room and you just you get six people. <coughs> there's like 20, 25, 30 people in this room, and you go around to each person. And you're basically like, all right, I, you know, you survive, you survive, but you could only give out like six hmm. survives out of everybody, you know. Right. So you're, you, 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 are talking to somebody, and you're going like, you know, ooh, sorry, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I've got friends here that are going to yeah. survive, and and then at the end, everyone talks about, you know, why did you pick the people you picked, or how did you choose to do that, or, you know, on no basis, like, but then mm-hmm. everyone had, sorry, everyone had a secret card. That would say like you know I'm a doctor or I'm a you know I'm this I'm this I'm this so it's like a personality it's like don't judge a book by its cover mm-hmm. and if you don't know what this person can bring you're literally just judging off the cover you know right that's kind of what happened here it's like I don't know who I'm gonna be at work with or not but when the time started running down it was like I gotta go I don't know what everyone else is gonna do but I need to get on the lifeboat you know? yeah so fun but, stuff. Yes. So you said you started this in 2021 and you, you started writing this story. How do you write a story where you don't know what's going to happen as it, as it unfolds? Because when I was watching it, I was sitting there with my wife and I was like, okay, so Rusko obviously has like the baseline and he kind of knows all the things, but then you get these outlier people who are just like, I'm going to do this random thing. And you're like, Oh man, how do I pivot? How do I like come up with something on the spot that makes sense? That's not like just sounds ridiculous. Like, how, how did you come up with that? Are you th- just that creative? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. I mean, he is. He's that creative. It's, well, it's 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 twofold. One, I've been running games for. I mean, I've been playing RPGs for twenty two years now. Wow. I've been running games for 12, 13, 14, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a, it's kind of a practice skill. Once you've, you know, I, I just did it at a much smaller scale with a table full of friends, mm-hmm. but, but Valentine and I have been, we've been beating our heads against this wall. of What does our world look like for so long mm-hmm. that when moments came up, you know, things that I couldn't predict or things that I couldn't, we call them fail safes. Yeah, we mm-hmm. we had already talked through so much of this stuff, and I already had such a good picture in my mind of what our world looked like and what our what our game looked like that it wasn't that hard to just wing it. Okay, but you'll you'll find we do that for everything. <laughs> uh, Val and I have we, we've coined this phrase: "winging it" is our uh, just flying what, by the seat of our. That's pants. what we're doing right here, right now. Yeah, it's uh, a. <laughs> 
one of the, the we had the we I mean we had the main story that we want. So this is going to continue. So this is season one. Mm-hmm. Season one survivors of season one will go into season two. There okay. will be more people that come into season two to build the group back up, and then it will whittle back down, and the same thing will continue on. Uh, in a perfect world, survivors from season one will still be there in season six, seven, and eight. There will still be some left in a perfect world. Mm-hmm. They could be gone, right? It would be awesome to have season eight and you have this veteran survivor that was there at the very beginning and they're still there. But we can't, you know, we, we can't decide that. The dice will do what the dice the, do. The dice do what the dice do. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we had to write week to week. So if we had a session on Sunday or Saturday and Sunday, what happened there? We had the overall arc already written, mm-hmm. but from what they did and who survived, we found out that day. So then we'd have to start writing during the week to have another session ready by the following weekend. Wow. And so we couldn't write the entire thing out because it's like a choose your own adventure. We didn't know what page they were going to turn to. Right. You no. Know, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Well, so the, ep- the episodes are like, around 12 minutes but how long was a full session on average um our last session was like almost six hours i think um but the average was right around three and a half yeah we wanted it three it usually went to three and a half four yeah um because sometimes it's you you know you get into that game mentality of like i just don't want it to end Mm -hmm. there was uh we were surprised i mean it was when we first got there the very first day nervous oh my gosh we had so we had a tent set out back we bought food uh for break we had everything set up nice and neat the tables were set up the only thing we didn't have was people (laughs) and we're like you know what if what if if no one shows up (laughs) like yeah and it's we got the camera set up we had uh, an audio guy there for microphones it was just crazy and it was one of those things where it's like the door opened to the shop and then all of a sudden it was full People just came in. Wow. And and before, as we're running this game for the first time, the first session, uh, we're looking at the time going like, we're having a great time. But we look out in the lobby and it's full again for the second boat to come in. Mm-hmm. We, we filmed on a Saturday morning, a Saturday night, then that Sunday morning, then that Sunday night for four different sessions. Mm-hmm. And on one, it was like in the lobby. And I'm looking at Russ, I was like, dude, we got to, like, there's, go. it's another game coming in. So it was a long, it was, a long couple of days. It was terrifying. It was terrifying, <laughs> but super fun. Right. I mean, it was, it was, uh, I think both of our wives laughed at us. It was literally a phone call where you said, Hey, I want to, you know, I really want to DM for a living. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, like, I don't know how ima- you can do that. If we could play this game and like, yeah. make a living at it. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. I think your, your response was, well, that sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then about 12 seconds later you're like you know we, we, we could, could do that yeah i mean it. i told her she was like you're, you're you you're crazy and i was like well because i have so many ideas and he has so many ideas that's like you know it would be a great idea and then you know a week later it's like yeah i was just like, our wife's just seen it enough that we're like you know this would be cool let's do this but this was one thing i was like well no let's really let's grab this and just roll with it and see what happens and here we are like a year no like that tractor tire I have sitting in my yard, I said I was going to use to work out. Yes, <laughs> well, you can't see it. The grass is growing around it. <laughs> it's there, though. We know it's there. I think we all need people like that. Like, well, this whole this whole segment on the on my channel is called ideas because that's how ideas start here and they turn into well, in this situation games, and in your situation, a community of seventy players playing this game that you wrote up that you are leading. And I think that's fantastic. And I'm assuming even though tensions were high at, at certain type in certain times, some of those players met uh, like potentially friends in these situations, oh, yeah. I would assume. Yeah. Absolutely. And nice. so people are coming from like all walks of life and they're sitting around a table. And I think that's the great thing. That's one of the, one of the reasons I play board games is for that community of Absolutely. that yeah. that time, that fellowship with people. Um, well, obviously, my wife plays a lot of board games, whether she likes it or not, and she is very graceful on that, and I love her dearly. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm um, with you there. I'm with you there. And so I think I think, really I think that's fantastic. 
my wife loves Clue, and I I'm horrible at Clue. She's got all the Clue games like I got Monopoly. Okay. So she, she I'll make her play Monopoly because I really get my my son's seven, and uh, I'm getting him into it uh, the right way, and he loves it. We played actually a couple days ago, and uh, she bought a Clue game uh, for kids. Now okay. I play I make him play the Monopoly big boy game, um, <laughs> and uh, she bought him a Clue game for kids, and he Clue game for kids, yeah, yep. and he loves it. And he's like, Dad, you got to sit down and play Clue. And I'm like, I'm not good at Clue. Like, I've never <laughs> been good at Clue. I've, I mean, I think I know it in like three moves. I'm like, it was it was this dude with this and, and here. And they're like, no. I guess Guess Who. I think you're thinking. Yeah, I'm like, guess, I love that down. game. Dude, Guess Who is an awesome <laughs> game. Man. You need awesome. to check out. You need to check out if you, if you don't like Clue, but you like that deduction. There's a small, small game. It just came out recently. It's called Museum Suspects. I can't see, I can't show it to you because it's across the room on a different game shelf, but it's a small game and you have 16 suspects. And on each turn, you look at one of eight um, investigation cards and it'll eliminate some of those characters. And then you have betting chips that you bet who you think the, the person is going to be six turns, no dice rolling. So you can't roll ones the whole time and never make it around the mansion. Into a room. Yes. You, you know that like that you'll lose every time if you're rolling ones and twos on clue right but no dice and it, it's fantastic it's super light themed it plays eight up two to four players 20 minutes and to me it gives the whole vibe of clue of that deduction dude that's so, awesome I gotta you should check that. it out I'm gonna try that. but mo- moving back um e- each episode has different cutscenes. And so you're kind of narrating the story and then you're seeing these cutscenes of all these miniatures. Um, what's the whole story behind all the miniatures and all that? It's not animation, but I guess you could kind of sum it up as like an animated aspect of the show. This was actually, I think I'm going to give uh, Val credit for this one. Um, RPGs or T- TTRPGs are quite often played with miniatures anyways. Okay. I remember when I first started playing, going to the hobby shop and getting a little pewter elf mm-hmm. up with model paints, and that would be my token. My token. That, that's my representation basically a token. On a, yep. and we'd have a board with grid, and we'd draw on it. And just, it's a, it's a reference, right? Basically, it's just a reference. You know where you are, where you are in the world compared to the bad guys. Yep. Well, with technology and things like 3D printers and, and the internet now, that has become a big part of the game. Like people mm. are printing and building and buying terrain pieces. So you could be in a town and have big houses and trees and, and it's, it's become a big part of, of RPGs. And instead of, cause we talked about animation, but there's just something really cool about something like that, that's it's not done as often. And like his his Val's thing was uh, train tracks. I love model trains. Model trains. I don't yeah. I don't have any, but it's uh, it's you know if you go to see a model train, you know it has the train going round and round in circles, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. But to me, the coolest part was always the scene, right? So that it creates. Yeah, you you start focusing in on what the little people are doing, like mm-hmm. the guy on the bus or the people walking across the street or. Yeah. Kids playing in the park or playing baseball. These are all set up on little mo- models while this mm-hmm. train around the city. And I could just sit there and and I went to a train convention at Cumberland Science Museum and they had these huge like dioramas of these train things. And it, it's like I just watch people just stare at them because you can. And it, it's not about just the train going <laughs> round and round. It's the story that this this whole diorama is telling. Mm-hmm. And names like you said, where when everything's kind of animated and everything is is STL or, or CGI. We're like, well, why don't we, you know, one of the coolest scenes was the opening scene to Mr. Rogers neighborhood. I always freaking loved it. I love the camera going over the entire model city mm-hmm. and going straight to his house, you know, where then he opens the door, you know? And so it goes from this yeah. whole model set to that. And I, I was like, I think it's a lost art um, that I grew up on where I was like, dude, I, I love that, that old school stuff. It tied so well into what yeah, and into what's actually into the pieces of the game. So mm-hmm. uh, we had no idea we would be <laughs> how much Man. work to paint all these things. You know, I always liked Nightmare Before Christmas with stop animation. You know, yeah. I was never 
biggest fan of stop animation, but doing all these models, like I have a real appreciation for the time it takes to create this stuff. It would have been easier for us to buy STLs and just pose them like we want digitally yeah. Yeah. to do the entire thing digitally. Cheaper, I mean, oh, it would have been, been faster and everything, but everything mm -hmm. is hand painted. Uh, Rusco prints them out on his 3D. He has four 3D right. printers that we're constantly I'm going. Now. I'm a 3D yes. printer farmer. <laughs> <I'm printing. laughs> like that boat, the big, the, the, yeah. the ships, those were all printed. He, he made those in pieces and painted those whole things himself. Wow. Yeah. So I'm I mean, never, I'm never painting. I don't even want a boat. I'll never own a boat. I'm oh yeah, so man, it took, it took forever. <laughs> so I spent so much time on that boat. And all I was doing was call and be like, hey, is that, is that boat ready? Is, is that boat? <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, that's where they came from. It's, it's, we're like, dude, it's, it's a really important part of the game and it's something that we want to show. It, it'd almost be like, you know, showing Monopoly without the houses or hotels. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we're not, we're not, we'll play Monopoly, but we're not going to use the houses or hotels. We don't need to show that. I'm like, that's a huge part of the game. You know? Yeah. So, um, but I do want to mention, uh, we actually, to take it to the home, uh, we just got our first modules done where you can play Die Inspired at home. Huh. So uh, it will be available. It'll be available for download within mm -hmm. probably a month or so. Somewhere around there. We got some editing to do on it, but yeah. But yeah, so now it takes place 3,000 years, 2,000. The, the, the setting that we're in for Die Inspired is 3378. Which is the present day. Which is the present day. So okay. our modules is something completely different than what other modules do. Other modules do is, is we're playing the history of this particular location. So mm. if they are module a lot of the, the secrets and things that you, that don't aren't quite explained in our story will all make sense because you actually get to partake in why the island, why our story is the way it is. Hmm. So yeah. like if you're watching the show and they come across this skeleton and he's got something on him or, you know, something and they're like, cool, he's got nothing. All right. He just died here, whatever. And he's just going, that's on the show. If you play the module, you'll know how that skeleton got there and how he died and why he was. There. was yeah. So it's connected in a time frame. So the mm -hmm. present day is the show mm -hmm. modules, any module that we put out will be the past leading up to where the show actually took place. And that, that'll be available to, to play at home. Mm -hmm. Um, just for, for RPG fans. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, as we, as we wrap up and move into that, like let's promote your brand. Let, let's promote where, where can people, you know, find your stuff. Um, how can they get connected to you guys? Um, the, the stage is yours for now. The floor, I guess. We have our, our YouTube page, which is our where our show is. Uh, our website will be, should be finished this week. Um, but those things are... It'll be dieinspired.com. Yep, dieinspired.com. Uh, okay. We have a Facebook and a Twitter and an Instagram. And I don't know how any of those things work. <laughs> Uh, winging it, winging it. Winging it. <laughs> nice. uh, we have our discord channel which you can get to through the youtube channel uh in the links um i can't tell you how to get there i just it's, know it's, i've seen it's, it it's all die inspired we were lucky enough when we came up with the name no one ever thought of it we think it's the most brilliant name ever uh yeah. when it comes to ttrpgs uh but Apparently, you know, no one, you know, we're like, dude, Die Inspired is available That's how smart across we are. the board. We're geniuses, man. Brilliant. All we need to do is let the world know that we are. <laughs> uh, the Discord channel is, we're, we're, we really want to kind of lean into that. We don't um, know how to use Twitter. We got, we're geniuses. I can't tweet. Uh, <laughs> I figured out how to do like the business Facebook page. No. Uh, yeah. A little bit. Um, but the Discord channel, we kind of want to lean into that because we're, we want to be able to connect with people that yeah. like Dines or like our show. And so that's something we're leaning into. Very yeah. cool. And well, if you want to just go to this house, this house is six, four, nine. No. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much if people go to dieinspired.com, they don't have links to all your social medias. They don't have links to yeah, your Facebook, uh, your YouTube yeah. channel and all that stuff. Yeah. So, if you go on YouTube and you just type in Die Inspired, it'll take you right to our channel, which will please. lead you to everything else that, that's awesome i've been enjoying it i've uh, you know i'm current i've watched 
all the episodes up into time of recording this. And so I'm excited to see the story unfold in the coming weeks and months, I guess, until season one is over. So I just want to take the time and say thank you for uh, for taking time out of your 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 evening and sharing your love and passion and your ideas with it, with with me and with the world. And uh, it's just super cool that I've have this. Uh, what is it? What's the word I'm thinking of? Like, um, man, I'm totally blanking. Like, I, I curiosity. This curiosity as to <laughs> RPGs and you know, kind of the dungeon crawls. I'm fantasy, not really my thing. Um, you know, RP like RPGs, typically not my thing. My brother, he loves them. <laughs> I, I that's just not my thing. I don't have the attention span for six hour sessions. Like. But if you if I sit down with board games and play about ten board games in six hours, I'm like, yeah, happier oh, yeah. than happy can be, right? Um, but my interest is peaked, and so I just want to say thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Dude, thank you, yeah, and yeah. all the best as uh, season one finishes and season two, and hopefully down the road we're talking about season eight. And yeah. um, so. Um, awesome. again, if you want to find out more about Die Inspired, dieinspired.com. If you want to find more about Cloudy with the Chance of Meeples, we're on Facebook, Cloudy with the Chance of Meeples. Remember, community built on conversation, just like games are built on ideas. Till next time, grab your umbrella. The forecast is cloudy with the Chance of Meeples. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and remember to grab your umbrella because the forecast is cloudy with a chance of meeples.